Since we have received the gift of the Holy Spirit, he is the gift of the Father sent to us by Father and Son to continue the mission of Jesus of winning our souls in this troubling world, in this tempting world, in this world that can, continues to confuse us and to take our eyes off the Lord. The Spirit has been sent to us to be at work within us, to sanctify us, to intercede for us, to be our counselor, to be our paraclete, right? But he continues to bring us gifts. The Spirit comes bearing gifts for us so that we can battle in this world and continue to choose God. Sometimes we can, we can reduce the gifts of the Holy Spirit to those that we saw at Pentecost manifest upon the apostles and Mary. The gift of being able to speak in foreign tongues, the ability to interpret those tongues, or the gift of prophecy. Those are all gifts of the Spirit. The Spirit will use those for the good of the church. However, each one of us has been given seven gifts of the Holy Spirit upon our baptism and confirmation, right? We've been given those gifts. They've been increased with us. They've been sealed within us, every single person, that we should be putting to use in our life we should recognize them, we should foster those gifts, we should use them to the best of our abilities. How do we know those gifts? Well, they were prophesied by Isaiah before the Messiah ever came. He explained what God would do and God gave him wisdom to understand what God would do through his people. He says this in chapter 11 of Isaiah, there shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse and a branch shall grow out of his roots, right? That means that a Messiah will come from a, from a line that was cut off, the line of David that was cut off for 14 generations, about 500 years something impossible is gonna happen. There's gonna be a branch that comes from a stump and is gonna restore the human race. And he will come with this spirit within him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might or fortitude, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord. And his delight shall be the fear of the Lord. Sometimes we, we translate that as second fear of the Lord into piety. So there's seven gifts, there's seven gifts given to us. If we were to talk about them generally, we would say maybe wisdom, understanding, counsel. We could roughly put those things together. Wisdom, understanding, counsel, knowledge, right? Is all our ability to recognize the gifts of the Lord. Knowledge is the ability to recognize what is, what is good when we see it. Counsel is the ability to decipher between the good things, to be able to choose them well, right? Wisdom is the ability to recognize the difference between worldly wisdom and, and heavenly wisdom, right? The wisdom of God and to be able to choose what, what, what God truly wants from us. That's, that's what makes us truly wise. Even choosing those things over the things that we're, we're, we're taught about engineering or, or, or foreign languages or, or mathematics or accounting or wh whatever it is that we study. Those are all good things. Those are, those are things that are given to us by the Lord as well. But they're not as important as wisdom of God, right? Of knowing God's ways and choosing his ways ultimately and above those things, right? The gift of understanding. Sometimes we say, I don't understand my faith. Oh, well, I totally get it. But sometimes I think that that gift, and I know that gift is dwelling within us, and it just hasn't been activated. Sometimes what we really need to do to understand our faith is to sit down and with faith in the spirit who has given us the gift of understanding to study our faith. Y'all, open up the scriptures and ask the Holy Spirit to give you the gift of understanding them. Open up uh, the catechism or some other spiritual read and ask for the gift of understanding as you read. The Spirit wants to give that gift, wants you to activate that gift. So let's tap into it. That's why we do these videos. We're working on understanding and wisdom and knowledge and counsel and all those things. Fortitude, fortitude is that gift to persevere through difficult circumstances, right? It's really the gift of martyrdom. If we look at the martyrs, they would stop at nothing with uniting themselves to the wisdom of God. I want what God wants above all things, even my own life on earth. Right? That is that, that's that fortitude to persevere through tough times. You and I need that gift right now. Our country needs that gift. Our world needs that gift right now to see with clarity and choose what is truly best for us. Finally, piety and fear of the Lord. Sometimes piety we think is just, just something, something that weird people do who just love Jesus too much and they start acting weird. No, we don't have to be weird. Remember, we can be normal. But piety is just that gift that allows us this respect and obedience and, and, and filial trust, like a, 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 a trust of a son or a daughter to our father, right? It's that, it's, isn't that the gift that we all want? Don't we want to trust more and love our Lord more and show him a greater reverence, right? And if we recognize him, we will show him that reverence. Finally, fear of the Lord. Fear of the Lord sometimes is, is so misunderstood, right? People say, well, you shouldn't fear God. Well, yeah, that's one extreme. We don't fear his person. We don't fear that he's going to just cast us into hell because we've made mistakes. No, he's come in mercy. He's come to show us that that's not his mission. His mission is to bring us to himself, but also on the other side of that extreme is this presumption of no matter what I do and it doesn't matter how I live my life and it doesn't matter if I convert or, or, or reform my ways, I repent and come back to the Lord. It doesn't matter because, because God just loves all of us. Well, yeah, he does love all of us, but he doesn't want us to stay where we're at. So that fear of the Lord is really something that we, we can translate into reverence. Like, do we really reverence him as, as our Lord? Do we recognize and, and respect him? 
We don't fear his person, but we fear offending love of him, right? It's just like a husband or a wife or your boyfriend or your girlfriend or your mom and your dad or your friends, right? We don't fear that they're gonna do something to us. We fear that we might offend the love that we have for them. All of these things, guys, all of the gifts that we've been given by the Spirit have been given to us so we can better recognize God's dream for us and to come to realize that we really share that same dream. The Spirit has come bearing gifts so that we can better live our life in God. 